Hello everyone. This is Vivek Singh. I work as a senior solution specialist at Informatica. In this video, we will talk about how to scan Snowflake resource in cloud data governance and catalog. We will have a quick overview of Snowflake. What are all the objects that can be extracted from Snowflake into CDGC? The prerequisites for configuring Snowflake resource. Permissions required from the Snowflake end to configure the resource. Data profiling support for Snowflake objects. What are all the type of connections supported for CDGC metadata extraction and profiling? The write-back capability. Resource creation in MCC, followed by job monitoring, and we'll have demo on each topic. Snowflake is an analytic data warehouse provided as software as a service. The Snowflake data warehouse uses an SQL database engine with a unique architecture designed for cloud services. Currently in CDGC, these are the type of objects extracted from Snowflake, like database, schema, tables, tags, views, materialized views, functions, stored procedures, pipe, stage, and columns. I would recommend to refer catalog source configuration guide for Snowflake so that you can have up-to-date information on what is currently supported. Link to the documentation is provided in the reference section of this slide. Before starting scanner configuration in MCC app, the very first step is to check for required licenses. So log into IDMC administrator, navigate to license, and for data governance and catalog, check for Snowflake catalog data warehouse v2 connector and Snowflake scanner package. Make sure to configure required permissions from the Snowflake database end. So on the Snowflake database object, these are the required permissions to extract the metadata. Once metadata is extracted for profiling currently, CDGC support table and views for Snowflake source system. The data type which are currently supported for profiling are listed here. Again, I would recommend to refer catalog source configuration for Snowflake for up-to-date information on what are all the objects and data types supported for profiling. To configure a resource in metadata command center, the very first step is to create connection in IDMC administrator. Currently, there are three type of connections you can create in IICS administrator to connect to Snowflake source system. First one is standard authentication. Second one is keypair authentication. These two authentication methods are used or can be used for metadata extraction and profiling both. Third connection type is authorization code authentication, but this can only be used for write back capability and not for metadata extraction and profiling. We will talk about a write back capability in the next slides. Let's first talk about standard authentication. Create a standard authentication, log into IDMC administrator and navigate to connections and then create a new connection. The type of the connection will be Snowflake Data Cloud. Select your runtime environment and then authentication type as standard. Provide Snowflake username and password. You need to provide account information and warehouse information from where you want to extract the metadata. And under additional JDBC URL parameter, you can provide additional parameters such as database name or role name. Additional JDBC URL parameter is completely optional. Once you create this connection, click on test connection. And once you see test connection is successful message, you can save this connection. After saving this connection, the next step is to create a Snowflake resource in the metadata command center. So log into metadata command center and click on new and create a resource of type Snowflake. Here you need to provide name for the resource and then from the connection, select standard authentication connection which we created in IDMC administrator. It will list down all the properties which we defined in the connection and then you can click on test connection to make sure that the connection is working fine. Click on next and here you can check the required options which you want to enable for this execution. So click on metadata extraction and then from the metadata extraction tab will be enabled here. You need to select the secure agent group for this demo. I don't want to extract procedures and functions. Hence, I will keep process programmable object as no. If you click on show advanced, it will show some advanced property. And here you can define the default variables which you which you want to use for any stored procedure functions or if you want to use any kind of pattern replacer that also you can define it here. Once you check the data profiling option, the data profiling tab will be enabled and here you can set the properties for data profiling. 
I have enabled data classification also. And from here, you can select all the uh, data elements or data classification which you want to use for this particular run. So I have selected all of the out of the box data classification and my scan is going to run against all of these data classifications. Similarly, if you want to enable relationship discovery, glossary, association, you can do so. We'll talk about this right back capability in next slides. So I will leave this right back unchecked. Click on next. And in the next step, you can apply the filters if you want to restrict the metadata extraction. So you can use include and exclude filter to include or exclude the object. For this demo, I have included and excluded few objects so that you can have a sample which you can refer when defining the filter. Then click on next. If you want to do stakeholder assignment, you can check this box. I'm leaving this box unchecked. And then in the next step, you can define the schedule and then click on save. After saving the resource, click on run. And in the next step, select the scope of the run. So for this particular run, I'm going to select all of the three options which I have enabled. Click on run and the execution will start. Once the execution is successful, you will be able to see the stats here. So if you click on metadata extraction, you will be able to see what are all the objects extracted similarly for the profiling and similarly for the data classifications. Once the scan is successfully completed, log into data governance and catalog, click on browse and then data catalog. And from here, open the resource. Here you can see all the objects which are extracted from Snowflake. If I click on any table, that a new window will open and here I can see the column information, profiling information. And since we enable the classification also, so here I can see one classification for country is inferred here. Next one is key pair authentication type. So to create a key pair authentication type Snowflake connection in IDMC administrator, it requires a private key and private key password to connect to Snowflake. So first we need to generate the public private key pair and then we need to assign the public key to the user in Snowflake and then we can use this information to create a connection in IDMC. Command to generate public and private key pair is given here. If you want to generate an unencrypted version of the public and private key, you can use first command. And if you want to generate an encrypted version, then you can use the second command. Once the private key is generated, then you need to generate a public key using this private key. So to generate a public key, this is the command. And once you have generated a public key, then you need to use this public key and you need to assign this public key to the Snowflake users. And remember, you need to log in with a user which is having security admin role or a higher role because only that user can alter the user. So you need to alter the user which you are going to use to connect to Snowflake to extract the metadata and profiling. And for that user, you need to set the public key. I have logged into my Unix box and here I am going to run the open SSL command to generate public private key pair. Since I'm using encrypted version, hence I need to provide a password for this. Same password we are going to use when we will be creating a connection in the IDMC administrator. So here the private key is generated and now the next step is to generate a public key for using this private key. So I'm going to use the next command and this one will generate a public key. So here we need to enter the password which we created in the previous step. If we see it will be generating two files. One is public key, another one is a private key. We need to copy the content of RSA key dot public key. So I'll open this file and I'll copy this content. So we'll copy this content from here and then we'll log into Snowflake. In the Snowflake, use this command to update the public key for the user which you are going to log into the Snowflake to extract the metadata. So you need to use this command. Next step is you need to copy this private key into a location which secure agent can access. So I'll download this private key and copy on the same server where my secure agent is running. Now log into IDMC administrator and create a new connection of type Snowflake Data Cloud. From the authentication, select key pair, provide the username for which you altered the public key in the Snowflake, the account information, warehouse information, and in the additional JDBC URL parameter, this is optional parameter and you can define additional parameters such as database name, role name. Provide the path of the private key which you downloaded and copied in the secure agent machine. So this is the path on my secure agent machine where my private key is available. 
and we need to provide the password for this private key. It's the same password which we used when we were generating the private key on our Linux box. After providing this detail, click on test connection. Once the test connection is successful, you can save this connection. After saving this connection, log into Metadata Command Center, click on New and create a resource of type Snowflake. In the connection, select the key pair authentication connection type which we created just before this step. Click on the test connection again to make sure that this key pair authentication connection type is working properly. Now click on Next and from here you can enable the required capabilities for this run. So for this particular run, I have uh, enabled metadata extraction, data profiling and data classification. All other options are same as standard authentication. So there is no change. You can quickly have a look. In the next step, you can apply, you can specify the filters to include or exclude the objects. And then if you want to enable the associations, you can do so. If you want to tag any schedule, you can do so. And then save this resource. After saving this resource, you can click on run and you can select the scope of the run and then click on the run button. The execution will start and you will see the status of the execution on the monitor page. So once the scanner execution is successfully completed, you will be able to see the stats for each step. After the successful execution of the scanner, you can log into data governance and catalog, click on browse and then click on the resource name. On the resource dashboard, you can see all the details, all the objects which are extracted from Snowflake. If you click on any table name, the table dashboard will open and here you can see the profiling results for each and every column. And since we enable the classification, so here we can see classification is also inferred and accepted here. So till now we have talked about standard authentication and key pair authentication. And using both the connection type, we have created a a catalog resource and scan the metadata and profiling and even the data classification we performed. Next connection type is authorization code authentication. This connection type can be used only for write back and not for metadata extraction or profiling. Write back is the ability to write back the CDGC classifications as tags to Snowflake database. Basically, first we extract Snowflake metadata along with classification capability enabled in Metadata Command Center. We can use standard or key pair Snowflake resource to perform this step. Then we enable write back capability on the same resource and use a Snowflake connection of type authorization code authentication to write back any inferred classifications as tags into Snowflake database. Let's talk about the steps to use write back capability. First step is to get authorization URL, access token URL, client ID, client secret, access token, refresh token from Snowflake. Then use these details and create a Snowflake connection of type authorization code in IICS administrator. Scan Snowflake database with data classification capability enabled in Metadata Command Center. You can use standard or key pair authentication for this scan. After successful scan, open the resource in MCC and export the data classification details. It will download an Excel file which will contain the inferred data classification details. We will discuss about this file in next slides. Next, reopen the resource and enable a write back capability. Select the authorization code connection which we created in step 2. Save and run the resource. On the next screen, upload the downloaded file. After successful completion of write back job, you can check the status. You can now log into Snowflake database and verify the tag values for the objects which were listed in the Excel we uploaded. To get authorization URL, access token URL, client ID, client secret, access token and refresh token from Snowflake, we need to execute a set of SQL commands with account admin or similar role. You can execute use database and use schema commands to set the database schema where you want to create the security integration. Next step is to create a security integration. This will help to get the details required 
to create connection in IICS administrator. You can use any name for security integration. In the auth redirect URI, update the IICS pod region information based on your organization IICS pod. You can get this information from your IICS org URL. Once the security integration is created, you can use desk integration and then security integration name command to see the details of the security integration. So the output will look something similar to this. And from here, we need to get three information. Client ID, authorization URL and access token. And after getting these three information, uh, we need to run another command in the snowflake to get the client security. So to get the client security, you need to run this select statement. I have created a security integration with the name OAuth underscore CDGC with these details. Now when I run desk integration OAuth underscore CDGC command, I'm getting the required information here. From this output, we need the value of client ID, authorization endpoint, and token endpoint. So note down the values which are available under property underscore value column for these three properties. And then we also need client secret. So to get the client secret, we need to run this select statement and provide the name of the security integration here. If I run this command, I can I will be getting a output something like this. Click on this output. And from here, you need to copy the value of OAuth client secret here. So this will be the value which we need to copy. After getting these values, log into IDMC administrator and create a new connection for Snowflake. Authentication type of this connection will be authorization code. Here we need to provide the account name of the Snowflake, the warehouse information for the Snowflake, under additional JDBC URL parameter, this is optional parameter and you, you can specify database name, role name in case if you want. Now, from the Snowflake, we got certain properties like authorization, URL, access token, client ID and client secret. So those information we need to paste it in these columns. And then if you go down, you can see access token is also mandatory. Now, this access token will be blank. Right. But after filling these three information like authorization, URL, access token, client ID and client secret, these four information, once you fill, just click on the generate access token. Once you click on this, it will ask you to log into your Snowflake environment. So log into your Snowflake environment and this information will be automatically fetched and filled in these columns. Once these informations are available, you can click on test connection. Once the test connection is successful, save this connection and then you can log into Metadata Command Center. Now, as I stated before, uh, the write back capability you can enable on uh, any of the Snowflake resource which is configured using standard, standard authentication or key pair authentication for the metadata and profiling. So here I have opened the Snowflake resource which we created for standard authentication and click on the configuration and previously we enabled metadata extraction data profile and classification right now this time we will enable write back so click on the write back and then once you click on this the write back tab will be visible here and from here from here in the connection we need to select the authorization code connection and it will list down the property of this connection again you can click on the test connection to verify the validity of this connection and then you can save this resource. Now, before running this right back, we need to download the classification file here, right? So for this standard authentication resource, when we run for the first time, we enable data classification, right? And that is the prerequisite for the right back. So since we already enabled the data classification and we ran this resource, so what we will do is we will go to the, click on the explore, and then look for this standard authentication resource here and right side you will three you will see three dots so click on that and then you will see an option called export click on that and then you can give a name of the document so i'll leave the default name and then click on ok it is going to trigger a job uh, to export the classification details and once this job is successful we will be able to download the classification file
the job is successfully completed and here you can see the stats as well and then here you can see download export file click on that and it will download one excel file i'll open this excel file so here you can see uh, these are the details of the objects which uh, which were scanned from the snowflake so here it's showing the database schema the table view right the columns which are associated with this table or uh, the view right and the identifier for these uh, uh, assets right so these are basically the uh, uh, assets which are extracted from snowflake as part of the metadata extraction and on these assets what are the classification or data domains which were inferred that information is showing here so on the city column usa city data classification was inferred right so that information it is showing here and uh, uh, which kind of asset it is so it is showing it's a column and this is a view column so that information it is showing here so this is the data classification which was inferred right and then here it is showing the tag information so where this tag will be created in snowflake so by default the name of the tag will be info underscore column underscore classification and it will be created under this schema in case if you want to change this information you can change but i will keep the default values as it is and i will go ahead and i will uh, try to run the write back using this file so let me close this file and then we'll go back to the snowflake resource and then click on run for this run, I will only run the write back capability. So I will uncheck others option. But in case if you want to run others also, you can do so. So I will choose the write back file from here. And then I will click on run. Let's wait for the completion of this write back job. Once the write back job is successfully completed, you can see the stats here. And now you can log into Snowflake to verify if the tags are written in snowflake or not so i have logged into snowflake and here i have run the command snowflake tags in database and the name of the database and here i can see in fact column classification tag is created and it is created on this schema and on this schema because these two schemas were there in the excel file and let's go to any table in this schema and try to see uh, if those are tagged at the object level as well. So I remember that custom uh, superstore underscore customer was one of the table where uh, the tag, uh, the data classification was inferred. So I'll quickly go and check the definition of this table. So here I can see in this particular schema, this table is there. And if I see on the city, I can see the data classif uh, the tag infa column classification and with the tag value of USA city is tagged. So in the Excel, you can see on the Superstore customer table on the city, there is a USA city uh, uh, classification and the tag name is infa column classification and same we can see infa column classification and USA city. Similarly, on the zip code, uh, the classification value is USA underscore zip and same is available in the Excel file here. So uh, with the help of write back features, the CDGC was able to write the data classification from the CDGC as tag into Snowflake. You can refer the catalog source configuration guide for Snowflake resource so that you can have up-to-date information about what is currently supported and what is not before you start configuring the Snowflake resource. We would love to hear from you. You can connect with us on any of the Informatica support channels. Thank you.